Look how cool it is in the garage. All right, we're going to the track. I'm dead, two hours of sleep. Stopped and got myself a little Mackers, as they call it here. Oh, there it goes. No, no. I don't want to miss it. Come on. There it is. So we're about to come up on the famous uh, Blue Lake of Mount Gambia. Um, I've heard it's not very blue today. Look at this cool little road. Am I going to be able to see it? Wow. This is kind of cool. Oh, we're coming up on the track. I don't know how they were able to get this town to let them basically turn their mountain park road into a drift track. Oh, I actually do know how, because I asked this last night. I guess they do hill climbs here, and then Luke and T hit them up and was like, yo, can we do a drift event? And then now there's a drift event and I'm here with my car. That's pretty much how it goes. Wow, this is so cool. So this actually would be considered a proper street event because this is a street course. So this is kind of the first like real street drift event I've ever done. I'm pretty excited, but the track's kind of narrow and I'm worried that the car might not have enough power. Everyone says it'll be fine, but it looks like it's gonna be dicey. I don't have a GoPro mic, so I think I'm just gonna dub over it, unfortunately, but I'll do my best. played it safe in second just to make sure that uh, I wouldn't bang in a third and then have some weird angle stuff happen. Second kind of kept my wheel speed down so I could play it safe run a very shallow line and know exactly kind of what's going to happen. Good thing is stock ECU I'll be fine with limiter. I shouldn't have any rocker arm issues like if I had an aftermarket hard cut. Car feels good though. Because of the external gate, because it sounds like my other car, I think I have the perception that it's faster than it actually is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if this were like, you know, the typical low grunt SR and it wasn't really loud or like didn't yeah. have an external gate, I'd be like, yo, this thing's slow. Because it's making all the right noises. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think, I see what you're saying. It's a little bit laggy when it yeah. like, it doesn't hit super hard. But I think once it's past where it comes on, if you keep it up there, it's very responsive. He said, oh, he had an electronic boost controller he was going to chuck on it, but then he was like, he's like, realistically, with what you said, he's like, you just don't, he's like, I don't, you don't, you don't need it. Yeah. And this, this tuner, he's like, he's very, 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 very good. Man himself, Mr. Luke Fink. 
Yes, what's going on guys? So, Luke's actually driving this event. You're driving this event, right? Yeah, I just put the, just changed the front wheels because I got two bigger wheels on the front for cruising because I got to look cool when I'm driving around. So, Sick. Um, that car got driven all the way from Queensland. The V35? To over 2,000 kilometers. So why is it called the V35 here instead of a G35? No idea. Huh. Well, it's a Japanese one. Got it. So I guess in Japan they were called V35s. Got it. So I've kind of talked a little bit about aesthetically how this car compares to mine, but I haven't really been able to give an accurate comparison on how it performs yet. I'll say suspension wise, it feels just as good, if not better than my car back home. Um, I don't think I was ever able to fully dial in the new GK Tech stuff after I put it in my car because I hadn't really driven it that much. This car feels phenomenal. So like suspension wise, yeah. on point. Power, definitely a bit less, obviously stock bottom end. It makes probably a hundred or so less wheel. I think it's more than enough for this track. The only thing that I'm kind of struggling with right now is just the second to third shift with the stock SR gearbox. Sometimes they're kind of like hit or miss. Some will be easy to shift, some aren't. So other than that being a little bit tricky, like it's super fun. It sounds just like my car back home. Like it's super responsive. What'd you think when you drove it? I liked it. Um, like Good. I said, it was the, it was a touch laggy than I expected it to be, but that's also how we asked them to tune it as well. Cody left, the boys are coming past. <laughs> In retrospect, we probably could have let it come on a little bit more aggressively just because I kind of neglected the fact that it is a bigger turbo. Yeah. I think my mindset was more so that we were putting a tiny turbo on and that's when you really have to be careful about it hitting hard and bending yeah. rods and stuff. But it's still super drivable. Like I found it very drivable. Like I think like second or third lap out, I was snapping her in and- For sure. Yeah. I mean the the lag like you notice a little bit if you were like maybe starting in third or starting in second for sure But once you're in boost the transient response of that turbo is like light switch. Yeah, yeah there's no sick. real time for it to spool back up definitely So sick. I'm I, definitely I pumped on it. Yeah, yeah. So. like even when I first drove it like I went first second It was like didn't even give a hint of dropping out of boost like it's pretty mint from that point of view with the ratios Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. for sure so that is one thing that I think could make the car a little bit better is if it has a 4.1 in it right now going to a 4.3 would kind of make third a little bit more usable. That's true. But other than that, like the car's sick. There was a guy that did suggest that, suggest that I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but you hadn't seen the track before, so it's hard to tell. But yeah. Yeah, third, you'd get into like a meaty third rather than like it just getting onto third then over wheel spinning. Yep. Essentially. But um, yeah, how are you liking the track though? The track's sick. Yeah. Uh, I'm still kind of like working my way commitment wise to oh, stay in it over the crest. Yeah, it's because, extremely commitment based. Just because it, you can't really see what's going on. It's so fast. Like I'm worried about washing out because the track is kind of loose. Like it's fast, but it, like you kind of float a lot. Yeah. So if you overcook it, like it's sketchy. Yeah, it, it's road surface for one. So it's not a circuit. Um, it's like a bigger stone in the road. So it doesn't uh -huh. have the grip levels. But everywhere where you are on big angle here, you're, you're going over a crest. So like, I know when we run our comps here and the guys grip their cars up, and when I say gripped up, they're still restricted to a 235 street tire, but over that crest guys are lifting tires. Really? Yeah, so it gets like, um, you know, pretty serious from that point of view. That's crazy. Stopping by a little electronic store in this tiny little town. I'll hopefully find a mic for my GoPro. Gotcha. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I'll make some work. so much fun in this I don't know if you guys will be able to tell from the footage but I'm starting to get pretty comfortable with it uh, I figured out kind of like the way to not miss shift if you notice some of those clips I miss shifted before I'm basically like kind of short shifting and like taking a little bit of time in the run-up so I can get in the third and make sure she's good uh, car feels phenomenal power is more than enough if anything has too much grip I need to dial out a little bit of grip I keep airing up the tires but it's so fast compared to the other cars I don't know if it's because the BC coilovers or the whole GK rear setup with the uh, kind of aggressive toe that I have set up with it but um it's sick, this track doesn't use tires, it's so fun. One thing I definitely need to make note of is how many laps I've been able to do without this car even starting to get warm. That's amazing. That's like the ultimate goal in a car like this. My X 
expectations are definitely blown away by this track. I had so much fun. I love Australians, they're so nice to me. Uh, massive thank you to Luke for putting all this together and getting that car sorted. It's been so fun. Um, today's video is kind of all over the place, like most of my drift event videos are. If you want to see anything specific, let me know because tomorrow's pretty much all just open, kind of like a uh, Matt Surrey, just do whatever we want. And then at the end, there's kind of like a 60 minutes to bin it or something where like you just go crazy and you win a grand. Um, but that's usually like when people like hit the wall and stuff, which I don't really want to do with my car. But, uh, and then Sunday is a competition. If you guys want to come out, um, check my Instagram. I have details on there. It's Mount Gambia. I don't know how close that might be to you. I know we're in South Australia, so. I had a blast. I had so much fun. I hope you guys like the footage. I tried to play with a couple different angles, but um, I do have that little thing that can like go with the wind that I could put on my roof tomorrow. I wasn't able to get a mic, so I'm just going to have to dub over the audio, unfortunately, but I'm going to order one, so I'll have one for the Tasmania events, but hope you guys like the content. It's probably one of the coolest tracks I've ever driven, like a proper street track, super fast, super snappy, challenging in tandem. I haven't driven this much in a long time. The car stayed cool. It felt good. I had a blast, so I hope you guys like this video. And I'll see you tomorrow.